What's up guys, I hope you're all doing great, welcome back. Now, this video is going to be a no frills, kind of straight to the point, informative video, rather than an entertaining video. The purpose of this video is to explain how to use one of these standalone kits. Now, a lot of people have messaged me and asked me how can they get this running or ask me to send them wiring diagrams or, or break down how the wiring's done. So in this video I'll go through all those things and it might just be simpler than you might think. So by the end of this video, if you still have no idea how to get one of these things running, then I guess I've failed in trying to explain this to you. Because it's not too bad as far as wiring goes. So hopefully you managed to learn from this and hopefully we've helped to get some more M57 engine swaps on the road again. So guys, this is not a paid promotion or anything. There's no benefit to me doing this other than bringing value to anyone who's watching this video. So I wasn't paid by Wiseman's Engineering to say this or anything, it was just we had a conversation and I asked him and he was willing to do it and I thought wow that's great. So yeah there's no deal there or anything, it was just something I thought would be handy to do because there doesn't seem to be much information out there at the moment or at least not many videos on how to install one of these. But hopefully I've managed to fit everything in there. If I did miss something it's bound to be very simple because these things just all plug together, there's only one place they can go and you can't really go wrong. Plus, you also get a good set of instructions there with some helpful aftercare advice also. So I guess it's time we started talking about wiring and how to get the M57 running. So here's the main wiring basically that comes on the engine. Now if this looks daunting, don't worry, because you haven't got to worry about most of this stuff. You might as well just wipe all this aside, like I mean this is all stuff that comes with the engine and can be broken down into three different parts. So first up, we've got what's called the engine loom. Now if you buy an engine or if you buy a donor car or the engine separately on eBay, 9 times out of 10, this is going to be bolted to the engine. And it just comes with pretty much every engine, like I mean it's, it's cheeky to sell an engine without this or all the other looms either. So this is the engine loom, you got all your different plugs on there, all these different plugs, they all have one home, you can't really get them wrong, 9 times out of 10 they're plugged in anyways. On the other end here, you got a few different plugs which will be obsolete if you're going to run this like as a standalone unit, especially if it was uh, automatic. Like, So this harness come from an automatic 530D, so I think the manual loom might be slightly different. But anyways, on this one, this is the important one right here. This is the body plug, this is what we call the body plug. Now this one has the main things that we're going to need to do this. So the main thing to know is black is your starter. Send power to that, your engine will crank. So that's the engine loom, this plugs directly into the ECU and it's the only plug on the engine loom that goes directly into the ECU. It will only fit into one slot, so again you can't get it wrong. This is your injector loom, again very simple. It bolts onto the top of the engine, all the plugs go to each specific injector, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, and it just plugs into the ECU again. Only one socket it will fit into, you can't really get it wrong either. So that's the engine loom sorted out, your injector loom sorted out, and finally you have the ECU loom. Now again, because this was automatic, there's a few extra bits on here, like this one went to the transmission as well. But again, this is very simple. This blue relay is your main relay, like I mean this this is going to send power to pretty much everything. Now the one I have on at the moment doesn't have this unit here, but what I did, but if I were to use this unit, and if you do have a similar unit to this, basically you want to send power right to here and you want to send power to here. So what I done was I put the two together and I sent power to this one terminal here and that basically sorted me out with power everywhere I needed. So after that you got your little fuse block, a couple of ground points, again plugs to plug into the ECU, they'll only go into one slot, so again you can't really get them wrong. Uh, the blue one's not needed, that went to the automatic transmission control. If it's blue, it goes to the ADC, if it's black, it's probably for the ECU. So one thing to remember with this, you'll see a bunch of brown wires on these different looms, and any one of them missing could just prevent your engine from starting. It will crank but it won't start. So you see on this, that's a ground point, a few more points here which are ground points as well. So remember, key thing to remember, I would say probably number one tip when it comes to wiring up one of these uh, standalone kits. If it's brown, it's ground. Lastly, we got our standalone kit. Nice, simple, tidy little unit. ECU with the EWS removed, and I'll show you how these plug together. 
So although I bought my standard own harness from MW Machines a few months ago, I was speaking to Max at Wiseman's Engineering about this and a few other things, and I got talking to him and I was saying, you know, we were talking about the channel and that and other kind of projects he's working on, and I asked him, would you be interested in doing a small promotion? In return, I'll make a video on breakdown how to install one of these standalone kits because I've had many people message me on Instagram and, you know, comment on YouTube just kind of saying, you know, they'd love to do this conversion but don't know where to start with the wiring. So the wiring seems to be a big thing, a big uh, deciding factor for people when it comes to M57 conversions. So this standalone kit really is plug and play. If you've got the three things that we showed just now, the engine loom, the ECU loom and the ejector loom, this just plugs in and it's pretty much turnkey from there. So you haven't got to worry too much about that. So Max, i got to thank Max. He agreed to do this promotion. And the offer is for the first five people to purchase using the code KIB10, you get 10% off. So the chances are, if you're watching this video, you're either interested in or have already done an M57 conversion. So if it's something you were considering doing anyways, definitely take it because it's only going to be for five people. Most of the people watching this are probably looking to do this anyway, so give Max a call at Wiseman's Engineering, he'll send you out a few of these. Now I will say he's extremely busy at the moment because he's moving workshop and all that kind of stuff, but you can speak to him yourself, but he is hectic busy at the moment with these projects and on. But yeah, hit him up, give him a call, first five people, 10% off. So, I'll show you how these plug together. This goes to your dash, let's say. This is going to be for your, your instruments and also your 12 volt permanent and your 12 volt uh, ignition also. So this is going to tell the ECU when your ignition is on, it's going to send full time power to the ECU also, and it's also going to send back things like the alternator charge light and the oil pressure switch to symbolize that the engine's running and it's putting up and, and there's oil pressure there. This end here is your diagnostics port, this plugs into the ECU, this is for your accelerator pedal, your, your potentiometer as we'll call it from here on out. This is just a ground point. And that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. So I'll show you now how this plugs in to the ECU along with the three other looms from the engine. Our injector loom right there. Our ECU loom, which I'm going to hang off the end of the fret bench. Basically only two plugs that we need off this loom. And this is both of them here. We've got the engine loom. Again, I'm going to hang that out of the way. But there's only one plug from this that would plug into the ECU, and that's this big plug here. We got the plug from the standalone wiring harness, that plugs in next. And then lastly, we got the injector loom. So there we have the two plugs from the ECU loom, we got the plug from the engine loom, we got the plug from the standalone wiring harness, and we got the final plug from the injector loom. So although it looks like a lot of wiring here, everything has its own little plug. You got the first two plugs from the ECU loom, you got the third plug from the engine loom, you got the fourth one from the standalone harness, and you got the fifth one for the injector loom. They will only go into their own little slots, so you can't mix and match them, so that's very easy on that end of things. After that, there's really not a lot to get this started. So all you need basically after this is to ground, to install this to a ground point, and install your accelerator pedal or potentiometer as we call it from now on. So this potentiometer, this is from the newer, this is for the newer M57. So you might find, for example, like the 530D that I bought, it has a cylindrical type potentiometer and the newer ones have the potentiometer built into the accelerator pedal. So this plug is for the newer type. So if you are going to look for a pedal, try and find one with the potentiometer built into the accelerator pedal. It is a tidy little unit in fairness. I wanted to use the original cylindrical type of mine just to experiment with, but uh, in the end I got a little, uh, I got the accelerator pedal and basically installed it and kept it simple. So that plug plugs directly into the accelerator pedal. That's an earth. And these little wires then we'll go through right now. These wires are color coded and are explained in the instructions here. So here are the instructions to install the standalone harness. Now on this here, we've got our six wires, and it gives us the color coding for each wire and its purpose. So constant 12 volt is going to be our yellow and black wire. This has to go to the positive terminal of the battery or anywhere where you have a constant full-time 12 volt power. Ignition 12 volt is going to be red and black, which is going to be this one here. When you turn your key to ignition, that tells the ECU that your ignition is on, and then the ECU will then send power to the fuel pump relay, etc. Your alternator lamp is going to be your brown wire. 
So again, this will pull to ground. So it says here, connect to 12 volt through bulb. So on your bulb, you've got 12 volt coming in on one side and this should come on, this should basically connect to the other side of the bulb. So when you turn the ignition on, your alternator lamp, your charge low warning light should come on to say that it's not charging. So this will be pulling to ground. When the engine starts, this connection here, this ground connection will break and therefore your light will go out. And that's pretty much the same principle for the oil pressure lamp, which is your red wire. Again, when you turn on your ignition, this is pulling to ground, which allows the 12 volts to flow, flow through the bulb, out the other side of the bulb, and through this here, which is connected to the ground. When the engine starts, this is no longer connected to the ground, so the power can no longer flow through the bulb, and the bulb goes out. So you've got your pink then, which is your RPM signal. Now you can use most RPM gauges, aftermarket RPM gauges. So on my 300 TDI dash, there was a small blank there where I think that some of them came with a little small kind of clock. I removed that and I installed a 52 millimeter RPM gauge. This is my RPM signal, I wired it up, I adjusted the sensitivity to suit my engine and it works a treat. Yellow wire here is going to be your fuel, your yellow and blue wire here is going to be your fuel relay activator. So again, switched earth to fuel pump relay. On this M57 ECU, when you turn on the ignition, I think it allows the fuel pump to run it allows the fuel pump to run for, I think, 30 seconds before it'll turn it off if you don't actually start the engine. So if you just turn the key to ignition on and don't start the engine, the fuel pump will pump for 30 seconds roughly and then it will stop, basically to save power. If the engine starts within those 30 seconds, it will keep pumping, it will keep the fuel pump running. So again, this will pull to ground, which means when the ignition is on, this will connect to the ground and will allow the power to flow through. So basically you want to bring power in to your fuel pump relay, this connects to the other side of the relay, and when you turn on the ignition, you create a circuit. So this is just your signal, let's say, and your power is gonna go the other way. So you're gonna have power in on one side and power out the other side, which is gonna go straight. You're gonna have power from, uh, let's say, a, a constant power supply, and it's gonna go out the other side then, this way, to your fuel pump. So you don't run power through this or anything, or supply ground to the fuel pump, you just supply ground to the fuel pump relay which then supplies power to the fuel pump. Your fuel pump ground wire should be grounded at all times, pretty much. So this side here is just your signal, let's say, and this side is your actual power to the fuel pump. So power goes in this side, when the ignition is turned on, this then connects to ground, power flows through, closes the relay, and power then comes through here and out to the fuel pump. So, the ECU connection, this goes to the engine room. Again, you can see me just plug it in there a second ago. It's pin number, uh, plug number three here. It's pretty much simple. It just plugs straight in. This connector connects directly to the throttle pedal as shown in the picture below. That's your throttle pedal. Again, just plugs straight in. Your earth ring plugs straight in. Your OBD2 connector. So this is for diagnostics. Now, I recommend you buy a cheap diagnostics tool. I purchased one off Amazon. I think it cost me something like £30 at the time. Very cheap and very cheerful. But it saved me a lot of time. So all I do with this, I just plug it in, it will tell me the basic error codes and it will allow me to delete basic error codes. It saved my skin a few times where it pointed out, let's say, for example, injector number six was misfiring. Whereas I could have spent a lot of time trying to find out what was wrong and diagnose that. This will tell me straight up injector number six is misfiring and it turned out to be something as simple as a bad connection. So I literally unplugged it, plugged it back on and it worked great. I actually had a lot of issues with trying to get my M57 started when I had it in the workshop. If you remember from one of the previous videos on this build, it took me a long time to get it started, and in the end, this saved my skin. <laughs> so, I'll leave a link in the description to this below. It's very cheap and cheerful. You can buy a more expensive one if you want. But for most people, this has been enough to just get you up and running and keep in the Land Rover at all times for kind of road, roadside assistance, I guess. So, one of the things I was really surprised to see in these instructions, even though it's unrelated to wiring specifically, it was nice to see that Max has given you some tips here when it comes to getting your engine running properly and getting more power out of it. So he says here, like in stage one, you know, in stage one remaps require uh, EGR delete, swirl flaps deleted, etc. But he also mentions that advised modifications. Now, in my opinion, he doesn't have to say this. I mean, these are things that I have done or I'm intending to do. Like the turbo and injector reconditioning I haven't done. I do intend to do it in the future. The rocker cover gasket I haven't done because mine's okay, but the crank crisp breather. I did do this to my M57, but again, that's something that a lot of people might not know. So the older M57s, they kind of come, they come with this old, uh, it's like an old filter. It's like an old, almost like an old oil filter in, in the crank crisp breather. And it just gets clogged up with oil and 
you end up, if you actually remember in the previous videos, I was kind of saying, where is all this black oil coming from? And that was the problem. That was all blocked up. So I actually went and changed my crankcase breather to the newer Vortex style. And I've had no issues since. It's breathing perfectly clean air since. So he actually gives you some advice here and says what to do. And crankcase breather, rocket cover gasket and turbo injector reconditioning. Gives you some advice on what you need to do for a stage 1 remap, what you need to do for a stage 2 remap. Basically some good advice in there which I thought was very helpful. He didn't have to say that. Basically he's given you more than you need to get the engine up and running and then told you what you need to do to get more power out of it also. So nice to see that in the instructions also actually. So one of the things I haven't got wrong to doing yet is my temperature sensor. So at the moment the only way I have of checking the temperature on the engine is to actually use my diagnostics tool, my cheap diagnostics tool. I'll leave a link in the description to that if you want to purchase the same one. It's cheap, very cheerful, and I mean it does the absolute basics. It might remove some bas very basic error codes. So the only way I have of checking the temperature now is with that diagnostics tool or a, th a thermometer. But I want to set up my temp gauge properly and I want to use the original Land Rover temperature gauge. So what I'm thinking of doing is using this RDX thermostatic switch now this I got on eBay, very good, I'll, again I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to this also. It's actually quite a nice little unit this, it's a, it accepts a 38mm hose, I mean it's billet aluminium, it's just CNC machined, nice little logo on top, and it has the thermostatic switch on the bottom. The only thing I use this for is to turn my electric fan on and off. This is not a sensor as such, it'll send power to the, thermo to the electric fan, and once the temperature drops down again, it'll turn off again. It's quite good. If you don't believe me, take out that switch, put it into a pot of boiling water and you'll hear a click. It's quite good actually. So what I want to do is install a sensor. So in this housing then we'll have the switch and the sensor. And I'm going to use the 300 TDI sensor. So I have one here which I bought new to do this. And this is it here. So ideally I'd love to stick it on the bottom corner here like this and keep it right beside the switch but there's just not enough room so I'm going to go in from the side instead and I'm going to use the milling machine to just drill a small little hole in here, do a nice and precise job, stick it in the side and it's going to look something like that. It shouldn't restrict the water flow too much and it should give me a nice accurate temperature reading. Now if all this fails you can buy these little sensors and they accept uh, basically a 1 8 inch NPT. And one thing to note actually, these are actually synced or paired, matched with the gauge. So you can't just use this sensor with any old gauge. There's different resistance in these sensors, so when you buy it, you normally buy it as a pair. And the reason I bought this 300 TDI one is because I have the 300 TDI gauge in the dash. And I'm going to try and see if that works. If it doesn't, I'll swap it out for an aftermarket 52mm temp gauge and a matching sensor. So we'll get this drilled, get it in the side of it, and that should give me a nice temperature reading right there. So you can kind of see there what it's going to look like. It's a little bit dark, but you can see through how far the sensor sticks inside. And I've still got to screw it in maybe another 5 mil, So it's going to be perfect and it's in there. don't think it's going to restrict any water flow either. So the only thing I might need to do with this now is to... Uh, well, I do need to ground this whole assembly. Because usually this is screwed into the engine block, which is grounded. So either I'm going to, you know, put a small cable... Uh, small. Uh, so either I'm going to put a small cable underneath it here and clamp it down or I might find another way of doing that later but we'll see anyways. I'll come up with something. So one of the things I wanted to show you in the next video was this cylindrical type potentiometer. Now this is the one that I wanted to use in my car and I wanted to experiment and see how it worked. It does operate right down to the kick down which I was going to put a stopper on like to stop it actually getting to that point. I don't know what would happen once you actually put it to kick down, seeing as you are no longer using an automatic transmission, the old transmission control is not connected. So my intention was only to use the part where, let's say, it would actually accelerate the engine, which took me right up to 100% throttle as far as I know. So I designed this housing, and 3D printed this housing, that this potentiometer fits into, and it fits in like this.
So guys, that's all we're going to have time for in this video. I could go on about this stuff forever, but uh, in the next video, I guess we'll talk about a few more things. If you are interested in this kind of thing, let me know, because I would be interested to see what you could use this for. There's a lot of things I could personally think of, and I want to test this out on my own Defender. So until then, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.